Greetings, and thank you for joining our AgeLock Gamma Science webinar today. It is my pleasure to introduce a very good friend of mine, uh, Rob Nagato Needleman. Rob's background is in science, and I chose him to give this presentation because he really has a knack and a gift at explaining some of these very complicated and sophisticated science terms and theories and concepts in a way that we can all understand. He's also a very trusted friend of the chief scientific officer of this company, Dr. Joe Chang. Now, Rob did his BS in biology at Brown University and graduated with honors. He studied in the PH program at the University of California, San Francisco in molecular biology and biochemistry on a National Science Foundation fellowship. He is currently the director of vet veterinary services at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary. We're looking forward to getting up there and being with Rob here soon a nonprofit exotic animal sanctuary. So it is my pleasure right now to turn the remainder of this time over to Rob to talk about some very, very exciting news. Rob, tell us about Gamma. Thank you so much, John. It's a privilege to be with you. Uh, we love working with you. You're, you're an incredible humanitarian, and your business sense is phenomenal. Um, I am a member of Arunaki LLC which is comprised of Amandji, Robert Spindler, my wife Christine nagato Needleman, and myself. And we're here to talk about age log gamma science. So I'm going to jump right in. People have literally spent thousands of years and billions and billions of dollars searching for the fountain of youth. The amazing part of this is it's not outside us at all. The fountain of youth actually has been inside us the entire time. In order to understand the aging process, we need to look to our DNA, which is our genetic material. But there is a very big difference between our genes, the, the genetic material we inherit from our parents, and how we use those genes, how we express those genes. And that's a process called gene expression. And here's a, a very good visual way of seeing this concept. So our heart, our lung, here's our liver, eyes, our skin, all of our organs are genetically identical twins. We cannot, if we took a cell from a heart and from a lung and a liver, we could not genetically tell the difference. But look how different all of our organs look. I think that's a pretty amazing thing. All of these cell types have exactly the same DNA. They're not using it the same way as the difference. It's not due to genetic changes in the cells, but it's how our cells use their DNA. That provides a difference in all of our organs and in many ways in our bodies. Here's another way to look at this. The basic blueprint of our DNA can be read in many, many ways. The DNA is simply the code. It holds the information for who we are, but how we use it varies dramatically from person to person, from cell to cell. And if you look at it here, this is a book called DNA. If I handed everybody on this conference a copy of the same exact book, you'd all have the same book in your hand, but there would be as many different inter interpretations as people who read that book. And that's like gene expression. All the cells have the same DNA, but they use it very differently. In fact, most of our cells only use 10%, maybe 20% of their DNA. But a liver cell will use different genes than will a heart cell, as will a lung cell. Time Magazine published a very good article on this in 2010 called Why Your DNA Isn't Your Destiny. The reason they said that is because there's a whole science around this now called epigenetics. And what epigenetics is, is changes that regulate how our genes are expressed, but they don't alter the DNA sequence. And they're caused by interactions with the cell's environment. And those are choices we make. So this article was about choices we make can affect our genes, how our genes are expressed, and it will also affect our children in many ways. So our genes and how our genes are used is now known to be inseparable from our environment. And our environment is things like diet, exercise, toxins we're exposed to, supplements we take, how we think, how we feel. Everything affects our gene expression. And so, for instance, if I took a blood sample from everyone on this call right now, and then we all ate an apple and took another blood sample in 20 minutes, the gene expression would be completely different in our blood. It is in constant flux. And that's called gene expression, how we use our genes. This topic is extremely 
highly published right now, highly focused upon in science. So the scientific journals, the media journals, everything is publishing this concept of gene expression and how we interact with our environment and use our genes. Another very good example is twins. Have you ever wondered, when you look at twins, identical twins can actually be quite different in how they look, in their personalities, and what they like and don't like. And this is how a twin is made. This is a sperm and an egg, uh, fertilizing the egg. The, the fertilized egg then goes through its first cell division. Now, normally this uh, two-cell stage would go on to four cells, and it would divide into a baby. Well, with, with identical twins, each one of these cells becomes a baby. And the two babies have identical chromosomes and identical genes. So they're genetically identical. But as you can see on this article in just beginning of this year, National Geographic ran an article called Twins Alike But Not Alike. The reason they said this is we can learn a tremendous amount about how we express our genes from two humans that have the identical set of genes because they're identical twins, but they express them very differently. And as it says down here, factors like stress and nutrition are causing different uses of the genes in the twins, and it allows us to get kind of a gauge on how much is coming from the inherited genetics versus uh, factors that are influenced by environment. And twin studies are very powerful for this. This is a difficult example, but it's, it's very potent. Deborah, who's here, is completely uh, disabled with Alzheimer's disease. She was diagnosed eight years ago. Her sister, who's holding her, is named Diana, and shows no signs of the illness. So these two women are genetically identical, but one of them has been unfortunately um, hit very hard with Alzheimer's disease, and her sister is completely healthy. So right off the bat, you have to say there is something else going on other than just the genes they inherited that have affected these twins. Now, here's another twin study, and these two women look very different. They're identical twins. They've had different environmental exposures, different sun exposure, different diet, different um, emotional issues, and everything affects gene expression. In this study, they actually looked at the chromosomes, and the identical chromosome in these two twins right here, there's genes that are being expressed differently between the two twins. And so now we have another experiment that's showing this gene expression is varying between twins. Here's a pretty amazing fact. Every single gene through epigenetic regulation can have somewhere up to 30,000 different variations of gene expression. If you multiply that by the 25,000 human genes in a, in a human, that's 750 million possibilities not even taking into account the various combination of all these genes, and then it goes up by orders of magnitude. So it's really quite a huge thing how gene expression can vary and affect who we are as people. The main takeaway point right here is that we are in charge. How we eat, exercise, think, feel, supplements we take, our environmental exposure, everything affects how we use our genes, but these are choices we make that affect our gene expression. We do have the power. We're not victims to the DNA we inherit. This is where this incredible platform of age lock technology comes in. In age lock technology, we have the power to affect how we age. What age lock is, is it's all about age-related genes. Genes whose expression changes with aging. Age lock technology has found that Many, many genes are expressed differently in youth and change as we age. Here's an analogy for this age lock technology. Here's a leaking roof, okay? And we're going to use that as an example for a source of aging in our body. There's many ways to deal with this, okay? One is to ignore it. Plenty of people are fine to just age as they do. More people actually want to have a say in how they age and perhaps reduce the effects of aging. Most anti-aging products on the market are actually addressing the signs and symptoms of aging. They're catching the water from the leak. They're not doing anything to address the leak. They're simply catching the water. And this would be creams that cover up wrinkles or things that hide age spots or perhaps an energy drink that gives a huge surge to the adrenal glands and a plummet afterward. And, and those keep being shown to be less and less good for us. 
What AIDSLAC technology does, it goes to the source and fixes it. So in our example here, it would actually fix the leak, repair the drywall, repaint the roof, go up on the roof, fix the roofing. AIDSLAC technology is about going to the sources of aging and repairing them. And what that is is returning us to a youthful state of gene expression. How did we create this age lock technology? Well, this technology is, requires a huge amount of science and many, many collaborations. So new skin scientists have 75 PhD staff scientists that are on our staff. We also have four global research centers. We have tremendous collaborations going on in all areas of science. We have recently acquired LifeGen Technologies. LifeGen has the only 30-year gene expression database of changes that are occurring in the gene as we age, how that expression changes. We've published numerous papers on the, the concept of caloric restriction, which is the only scientifically validated method to date to either slow down or reverse aging. Now, we have 150 either current or um, past collaborations with major universities around the world, including Harvard. We have an exclusive uh, agreement with Stanford University in certain areas of research. We work with Purdue University exclusively. We also work with UCLA, Tufts, University of Utah. The list goes on and on. What is AIDSLAC technology? It represents the remarkably innovative science and technology platform by which we're able to identify and then target and reset the sources of aging which we've already talked about is at the level of gene expression. Dr. Joseph Chang is our chief scientific officer. He's a phenomenal scientist and very caring man. I've gotten to be very close with Dr. Chang. He wrote a book called The Aging Myth, which explains the concept of aging as it relates to gene expression changes and how age lock science is then able to reverse those changes. His, his book went immediately to the New York Times bestseller list, Wall Street Journal bestseller list, USA Today bestseller list, because people want to know how to affect how they age. A breakthrough discovery has happened in this age lock technology, which forms the crux of our age lock platform. We have found what are called youth gene clusters, and this is a new name because we just discovered them. These youth gene clusters, or YGCs, are functional groups of genes that are associated with youthfulness. So when, they, when these groups of genes are being expressed in a certain manner, youth occurs. And it's a huge breakthrough in science. Here's an example of a, um, an example youth gene cluster. Now, normally these actually have 50, 100, 200 genes. There's many genes in a youth gene cluster. But in this example, we have five genes. And when these genes are expressed in a certain way, some are at high level expression, some are low level, there, there's some in the middle. When they're exactly right, we have youthful gene expression. And from that, youth occurs. Now, as time happens and different things affect our, us in aging, this youth gene cluster becomes expressed in a different way. And that expresses an aging appearance or age in the body. So the genes are now not being expressed as they were in youth. What age lock technology does is it takes those genes and returns them back to a youthful state of gene expression. What's amazing with age lock technology is we found that the cells actually default to a state of youth, which means given the right, right uh, natural ingredients and right environment, the cells are more than happy to express themselves youthfully. So they return to a youthful state of gene expression. Now, this is a very complex issue, although I hope you can see that the, the, the concept of it is very simple. How it's done is very complex. Genes that accelerate aging need to be turned down. Now, genes that preserve youthfulness need to be turned up. So age lock technology is all about balance when we reset these youth gene clusters. This is a good example with an orchestra. Because as we saw in the example where we repair a roof, it takes many steps to repair a roof. Well, there are many genes that have to be returned to youth in order to have youthful expression. So we have this incredible orchestra, and it sounds great when we're young. You know, and all of our genes are in tune and playing at the right levels. And in the orchestra, the violins are synced up with the cellos and the timpanis and the French horns. 
Well, as aging occurs, a lot of instruments go out of tune and they're not in sync and some are too loud and some are too quiet. Age lock technology resets that orchestra back to its youthful sound. Now, as the orchestra gets older and out of whack, it doesn't matter if you have the best cellist in the world playing, the orchestra still isn't going to sound good. And that's why there's a, there, you know, the competitors that are focusing on single genes, and you hear there's a gene associated with, you know, that makes you old. It just isn't true. There are multiple genes in these youth gene clusters, and they all need to be affected back to youth. Now, here's some of the products that have come from this amazing age lock uh, platform. We've been able to reset the skin, youth gene clusters back to a youthful state. We have our age lock transformations in the galvanic spa. We've also recently released a body spa. So the skin of the body, which turns out to have different youth gene clusters, is also reset back to youth with our age lock technology. Our first internal supplement has been nothing short of incredible called HVOC Vitality, and this sets the energy systems, or the mitochondria, our little cellular power plants, sets them back to a youthful state of gene expression, and we have youthful energy. And all of these have clinical trials and third-party studies, and we've been publishing these results in third-party journals. The Discovery Channel is actually currently filming a special on this HVOC technology because it truly is a groundbreaking thing in science to be able to, first of all, find these youth gene clusters and then reset them back to youth with natural ingredients. And that is exclusive to New Skin Enterprises. Now, there's a critical issue. We've addressed youthful skin, body shaping, and youthful energy with this age lock technology. Now we want to look at this massive weight problem facing the world. First question is, is there a problem? I'm going to go through some of the science of the obesity issue because I'm a scientist, that's what I do. All of these are going to be quoted from journals and different sources. But obesity overtakes smoking as America's biggest health problem. Now, we're talking about quality of life, mortality, this is death rates, morbidity, diseases associated with obesity. It's overtaken smoking now. This is from the American Journal of Preventative Medicine. Next question is, who diets? What do the numbers look like? Well, here's an article from ABC News just a couple months ago. The article actually says there are over 108 million people just in this country that diet every year. And dieters typically attempt to make four or five attempts per year. 95% fail to keep that weight off for more than a year. So we're looking at less than 5% success with the current diet with a massively uh, world-affecting issue of obesity. Over 1 billion people are currently overweight globally, and the numbers are growing. The World Health Organization is actually calling this globesity now. They are so concerned about the issue. Another disturbing fact is that 925 million people went hungry across, across the globe in 2010. Even more astonishing is we are now living in a world where the number of people dying from obesity exceeds the number of people dying of starvation, and soon the number of people dying of obesity will dwarf the number of people dying of starvation. This is not only alarming and disturbing, but extremely concerning to anyone who is concerned about our world. Harvard School of Public Health came out with this study recently. They're saying smoking, high blood pressure, being overweight are the leading preventable risk factors for premature mortality, premature death in the United States, preventable risk factors, which means we have a choice in these. These are diseases. They're called comorbidities, diseases that go along with obesity. Hypertension, coronary heart disease, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, type 2 diabetes, endometrial breast, prostate, and colon cancers, high cholesterol, stroke, sleep apnea, respiratory problems, and this isn't even the whole list. So there is a tremendous amount of disease associated with obesity directly as well. The obesity epidemic. Here's the question that's now being looked at in science. Is this a genetic thing? Are people inheriting this propensity to obesity? Or is it an environmental issue? And is it affecting gene expression? Well, there's many, many publications if you search online. Here's a recent one called Genetics and Obesity, uh, Epigenetics of Obesity. It's talking about 
looking at what we inherit versus gene expression changes that are related to obesity. The current obesity epidemic is clearly not of genetic origin per se, but due to unfavorable changes in lifestyle and environment. We're calling this the obesogenic environment. You'll start seeing that word more and more in the literature. What that means is gene expression changes that are occurring relating to obesity based on diet, based on sedentary lifestyle, all of these environmental things are affecting gene expression that's producing obesity. And if you just stop to think about for a moment, the enormous, this enormous alarming rate that obesity is growing and overweightness on our planet is going up much too fast for it to be simple genetic changes in people because the, the rate of genetic changes or inherited mutations is much lower than this explosion of obesity. Anyone on these kinds of diets that are provided now and kinds of um, environmental toxins and uh, sedentary lifestyle can have a propensity towards obesity. Now here's another uh, very strong example of this. This was worked on at Duke University. It was on the NOLA show. But these two mice are genetically identical. There, there are twin mice, same exact gene. The only difference is the mouse on the right, her mother was given in utero, when she was in utero, extra B vitamins, B12, folate. And what happened is it had shut off this genetic mutation. So this is a strictly environmental change, B vitamins. And what happened is the yellow mouse is obese, they're prone to cancers and uh, type 2 diabetes, all kinds of disease. And that whole genetic mutation still exists in this mouse, and yet this mouse is normal due to strictly a change in environment, which happened to be vitamins. Now, this mouse also gave birth to healthy individuals without needing to give those extra B vitamins. So this genetic change was actually passed on. So it's a very potent example to see that the, the gene was simply switched on and off based on epigenetics. So do you realize that all of these kinds of genes are affected. The gene expression changes occur affecting fat metabolism, fat storage, lean tissue growth, appetite, fat synthesis. All these things are shown scientifically to be related to gene expression, how we use our genes. So the big question is what if we could affect the genes involved with being overweight, the expression of those genes. And what's so exciting is we have used our billion dollar brand AgeLock to create the first gene expression based fat loss products in the world. We can affect the gene expression. And what's really incredible is we're talking about fat loss here because we can target those specific genes now with our AgeLock technology. This isn't just weight loss, you know, it's not about just losing weight. I actually was reading a personal trainer the other day as I was preparing for this talk. He said, you can cut off your leg and you lose weight. We're talking about addressing fat loss and every diet in the world is search searching to figure that out now because a lot of people lose a lot of muscle when they go on any all these diets available and they actually lower their basal metabolic rate and, and it's called yo-yo dieting because at the end of it, they're Metabolism has dropped and they gain back even more fat. Our bodies are designed, you have to understand, to store fat, not to lose it. So this breakthrough, we're so excited to announce, it's called AgeLock Gamma. And you're some of the first people to ever hear about this. We're introducing AgeLock Gamma, gene expression-based fat loss. Anyone can benefit from, from this. Do you have anywhere in your body, do you want to lose belly fat? Do you have body fat you want to lose? Do you want to increase your lean body tissue? Do you know anyone that does? Just look around. My wife and I were in the mall yesterday. The obesity epidemic is no longer subtle. It is growing at astronomical rates. What I love, because one of our missions in Aruna Key LLC is to end world starvation, is New Skin Enterprise has also scientifically come up with Vitamil. It's right here in these children's hands. It's a five pound bag of food. We worked with Ken Brown, Dr. Brown at UC Davis who's an expert in world malnutrition and the World Health Organization, and we worked with our new skin scientists and came up with a nutritional food that feeds malnourished bodies. And New Skin Enterprises has donated already around the world over 267 million meals 
every pound you lose on this age lock AMRA program, New Skin will feed a child for the day. That's an incredible thing. So we're dealing with two issues here. We're working to um, assist in ending this global obesity crisis, and we're also working to end this global starvation crisis. And that, for me, is extremely emotional and good. I came across this fact as I was preparing this talk, and I can't not share it because the contrast is amazing. In the current diet industry in the world, the amount of money celebrity endorsers on average per pound lost is $33,000 per pound they make. And we're talking about feeding a meal to a child in the world that is starving and malnourished for every pound you lose on age like gamma. And I think that's incredible. So this, in summary, AgeLock as a product platform. So we're taking gene expression science, AgeLock, for the first time ever, and we're providing an innovative anti-aging product platform that includes skin care, you know, outside of our bodies, and nutrition inside of our bodies. And this platform we're proud to call AgeLock. Dr. Chang's book, The Aging Myth, I pulled a few quotes that just were extremely profound to me. You're part of that first generation of people with the knowledge to actually influence the genes that cause aging. We have broken the bond between biological and chronological aging. We have the power to affect how we age. And through AgeLock technology, we do that at the level of gene expression, where aging is actually sourced. So we'd like to welcome you to AgeLock Gamma. This is the first in our series of science talks on AgeLock Gamma. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an incredible day.